One incentive of being self-employed are the tax benefits. In this video, I'm gonna discuss with you 10 things you can deduct on your taxes if you work at home. Because of these write-offs, I've saved thousands of dollars on taxes in the last few years, which has helped me to grow my business. So you don't wanna miss out on that opportunity. The first thing you need to know before I tell you these 10 deductions is that I'm not teaching you things to find loopholes in the system. I'm not trying to teach you to somehow dodge the IRS. Everything you'll learn in this video is completely legal and the IRS has no problem with it. It's not gonna give you any red flags. You do not wanna mess with the IRS. They will hunt you down and they will ruin your life. In this video, I'm not teaching you ways to trick the system. So let's just clear that one out of the way first. Everything you learn in this video are legal and ethical ways to save money on your taxes. Second thing you must understand is that I'm not a CPA. Everything I teach you in this video is current and they're, they, they reflect real tax laws for 2018, but tax laws change all the time. And so definitely consult a professional tax advisor before you actually file your taxes. Don't just go off this video alone, but what I am teaching you is current. The third thing I want you to understand is don't fall into the trap of trying to sabotage your income to stay within certain tax brackets. When you climb up the ladders of success, you're gonna be paying more and more taxes. Embrace it, own it. It's called a success tax. One of my mentors taught me about the importance of a success tax, that when you become successful, you pay more in taxes. Suck it up, that's just the way it is. When you enter into a new tax bracket, pat yourself on the back, congratulate yourself, that's good news. That means you're doing really well. I have sabotaged my income too often because I was afraid of climbing up and now having a higher percentage that I have to pay on taxes. So I would unconsciously throughout the year limit my income because I felt comfortable in my current tax bracket. And I'm not alone in that. Many, many people are unconsciously sabotaging their income because they feel comfortable where they're at and expecting the certain refund that they're gonna get every year. And so make sure that you analyze yourself and ask yourself, am I doing that? Am I sabotaging my income so I can stay in a certain tax bracket? Because if you're earning plenty of money and you're climbing up in tax brackets, guess what? Who cares that you're paying more in taxes? You're gonna have a lot more money even after taxes than you ever would if you just stayed with that original income level. But with that said, I'm like everyone else and I'd like to save as much on taxes as possible. And so in this video, I'm gonna teach you deductions you can take so that you can pay only what you're legally required to pay because there's no reason to overpay your taxes because then that money could be used to grow your business. The IRS and the government has allowed deductions to exist so that businesses can flourish because businesses are the heart of the economy. As long as businesses are doing well, people have jobs. And if people have jobs, they're spending money. If they're spending money, it just cycles back into the economy and the economy does really well. So these tax benefits are, are a good thing, are a good thing. So you, you might as well take advantage of it and get every deduction you possibly can, but while still legally staying within the limit that the IRS allows, and not doing anything dodgy, not trying to trick the system. That's not what this is about. So here are the 10 deductions you can take in 2018 if you work at home. Number one, your home office. If you work at home, you're gonna have a home office, whether that's an extra bedroom or an actual office. The square footage that you use to run your business from home can, a, a, can uh, go towards a percentage of your rent and your utilities that end up ends up getting written off of your taxes. And the IRS has a formula they use to, to calculate all that, but all you have to know is that when you file your taxes, make sure you take the home office deduction and that will help you save money on your taxes. Number two is office supplies. Anytime you buy new office supplies, make sure to use your business debit card, not your personal one, so that you have all those expenses tracked. And all of that stuff can, can, can be written off on your taxes because if you're using your office primarily for business and you have to buy supplies to operate your office, those supplies are tax deductible. Number three is car mileage. Whenever you take any trips, whenever you get in your car and drive anywhere, even if it's only across the street and it's related to business, it's business travel, you're going to see a client or you're going in, uh, to a training event relative to your business, whatever kind of travels related to your business. I mean, last year I saved 
I think I subtracted about $900 off of my tax taxable income because of the mileage deduction. So make sure to track your miles. I use QuickBooks. They have an easy app that you can track your miles when you get in the car. Uh, and there are plenty of other tools out there you can use. The fourth thing is business education. That's one that people don't often think about. Whenever you go to a training event or a conference or you hire a business coach or you uh, sign up for an online course that's teaching you things relevant to your business, uh, that's developing you personally and professionally, that's gonna help you in your business, that's teaching you business skills or communication skills that you're gonna use in your business, whatever you sign up for, you can write that off of your taxes. I've, I've invested in over $10,000 on education that I needed in order to build my business and coaching that I needed to build my business. So yeah, it's, 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 it's worth investing in and especially since you can deduct it on your taxes, make sure you don't miss that one. Number five is travel expenses. Whenever you go on a plane, whenever you travel anywhere, uh, whatever expenses are incurred in that travel relative to your business, uh, make sure to track that because you can deduct that on your taxes. You can also deduct meals that you pay for while you're traveling or if you're entertaining a client. Number six is equipment. Anytime you buy new equipment for your business, that's a write-off. Number seven is the internet. If you have an online business and you use the internet for your business, then you can deduct a percentage of your internet usage uh, based on how much you use for business versus personal and you can add up how much you paid for your internet all year long and deduct the percentage for that. Number eight is your phone bill. If you use your phone at all in your business, you can deduct a percentage of that phone bill on your taxes. Number nine is health insurance premiums. That's an important one because if you're self-employed, you have to pay for your own private health insurance or dental insurance and you can deduct that on your taxes, which significantly helps in you being able to actually afford that. And number 10 has to do with just any other business expense that you have to run your business. It just obviously gets written off of your taxes because you only pay uh, taxes on the profit that you make in your business. And so, you know, I sign up for things like Dropbox and I have transcription software and I have editing software for videos. And so I have all this different software and these and I, I pay for my website every year. And so those types of services that I pay for to run my online business are all deductions on my taxes. So freelancing can definitely be enticing when you know how many deductions you can take that a W-2 employee cannot take. Uh, you know, with that said, you do have to pay a self-employment tax. You're basically paying extra into Social Security. And um, when, you're in, when you're employed as a W-2 employee, your company is paying for that. And so there are a lot of things your company is paying for that you don't even realize. Like they're paying you your salary, but they're actually investing double or triple to have you as an employee than they are just in your wage or your salary. And that's why even for companies, hiring contractors is actually pretty attractive because they only have to pay your rate. They don't have to pay for all these other benefits. But when you're self-employed, you gotta know and realize that you're paying for all your own benefits. But luckily it all kind of equals out because of all the tax benefits that you do get. The important thing you must remember in all of this is you have to be good with your bookkeeping, with your accounting. You've gotta track your expenses throughout the year. You've gotta save receipts. You've gotta make sure you have separate bank accounts for your business and your personal expenses because that, <laughs> I, I've had, I learned it the hard way where I, I mingled my business spending with my personal spending in the same bank account and it was a huge headache for me come tax season to have to go back and add everything up. And so make sure you open up a bank account for your business and have your own personal bank account and make sure every time you, you make an expense in a purchase, anything related to your business, it's always on your business bank account so that you have all the transactions right there at the end of the year. And a tool I like to use as well is QuickBooks. QuickBooks Self-Employed is pretty good if it's just you and right now you're just a sole proprietor, then QuickBooks Self-Employed works really well and you can track your mileage through that and you can categorize all your expenses so it automatically puts new expenses into certain categories on your business expenses. So at the end of the year when it's time for taxes, everything's already added up. And with the bookkeeping and accounting, it's important that whenever you get a paycheck, you've got to put at least 10% of that paycheck away to pay for taxes at the end of the year. Um, because, uh, and you should be putting more of that away in order to build up an emergency fund for your business. I would put 20% of every time somebody pays an invoice, you put that away. Uh, but because of all the tax write-offs, you're not gonna end up paying taxes on all of your income. But if you put 10% away, you'll certainly have enough to pay taxes. 
and uh, if you end up having more in your savings account than you ended up owing in taxes, then great. That's money you can now either convert into personal income or roll over into investing in your business the following year. You don't want it to have a surprise where come April, you owe the IRS $5,000 that you don't have. And with that said, you might also have to pay quarterly taxes. Make sure to consult a CPA to find out for sure whether you have to pay quarterly taxes or not, where you're paying taxes throughout the year and QuickBooks Self-Employed can help estimate what you're having to pay. And overall, just make sure you get advice from an actual CPA before you go file your taxes. Don't just go off this video alone. I've liked to use TurboTax in the past. It's worked pretty well for me while my business has just been simple and smaller in being able to file my taxes, but you can you know, do it in whatever way you want. And one last thing you must know about taxes and being self-employed is that you have to pay taxes on all of your income. There is a myth that if you earn less than $600 from a specific client, you don't have to pay taxes on that. Yes, you do. There's a myth that if you don't receive a 1099 in January from a client from the, last, from the past year, that you don't have to pay taxes on that. Yes, you do. You will be fined for that if you don't pay taxes on that and you get audited, the IRS will win. They will win. You have to add up all your, because I've had, as a freelancer, sometimes you have lots of small gigs where a client pays you 300 bucks to do a short project and they're not gonna send you a 1099 because they only paid you $300 throughout the year, but you still have to count that as your income when you file taxes. So yeah, don't fall into that trap thinking that, oh, they didn't send me a 1099 so I don't have to you know, include that as income. You need to add up every single dollar that you earned as income in exchange for you providing a service for a business or an individual and that is what you have to pay taxes on. Then obviously though, when you calculate all your deductions and if you're married or you have children, you'll have even more deductions, then you're not actually paying taxes on every dollar you earned because of all the deductions, but you have to still report that income. So say you make $50,000 in one year, including all the income from people that didn't give you 1099s, you might only pay taxes off 25,000 of that you still have to report to the IRS that you made 50,000 and that, and that you have 25,000 of deductions. Yeah, so do not get into trouble and think that you don't need to report income when you don't get a 1099 or when it's only a small project. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can learn more about how to master the life and business of freelancing. And also go to airlight.tv where you can learn more, you can sign up for my free class, you can attend a workshop, you can follow my podcast. There are plenty other opportunities to get educated here. And in the comments section below, let me know one thing you learned today that you didn't know before. And also, if you have a question that you want me to make a video on, type that question in the comment section and I'll be sure to make a video on that for you so that you can learn what it is you're wanting to learn to grow your freelance business. I'm Chad Grevelese and have a great day.